In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned, in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Let us pray. O God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin, look graciously on this confession of our lowliness that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. Moses looked and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that Moses had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, here I am. Then God said, come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. God said further, I am the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey. But Moses said to God, If I come to the children of Israel and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said further, Thus you shall say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the children of Israel, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this my memorial for all generations. The word of the Lord. The Lord is merciful and gracious. The Lord is merciful and gracious. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget all his benefits. The Lord is merciful and gracious. 
It is the Lord who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy. The Lord is merciful and gracious. The Lord works vindication and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his steadfast love toward those who fear him. The Lord is merciful and gracious. reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, that our ancestors were all under the cloud, all passed through the sea, all were baptized into Moses, in the cloud and in the sea, all ate the same spiritual food, and all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank from the spiritual rock that followed them, and the rock was Christ. Nevertheless, God was not pleased with most of them, and they were struck down in the wilderness. Now these things occurred as examples for us, so that we might not desire evil as they did, and do not complain as some of them did, and were destroyed by the destroyer, these things happened to them to serve as an example. And they were written down to instruct us on whom the ends of the ages have come. So if you think you are standing, watch out that you do not fall. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus was teaching the crowds. Some of those present told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. Jesus asked them, Do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were worse sinners than all other Galileans? No, I tell you. But unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those 18 who were killed when the Tower of Siloam fell on them, do you think that they were worse offenders than all the others living in Jerusalem? No, I tell you. But unless you repent, you will all perish just as they did. Then Jesus told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, See here, for three days, for three years, I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree, and still I find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? The gardener replied, Sir, let it alone for one more year, until I dig around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Jesus is never in the habit of beating around the bush. He always gets directly to the point, and particularly so in today's Gospel for the third Sunday of Lent. 
Unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. Jesus says this twice in the gospel. The occasion for him saying this is that a group of people have come to him and begin, began talking to him about a group of Galileans whose blood Pontius Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. This is the same Pontius Pilate who will later attempt to wash his hands of the killing of Christ himself. The Galileans referred to are probably, were, were probably followers of a man named Judas the Galilean who taught that it was immoral for the Jews to pay taxes to the Roman emperor. Jesus, as we know, will later be asked himself, is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor? And he will say, yes, give to Caesar what is Caesar's and to God what is God's. But Judas the Galilean taught it was absolutely wrong to pay taxes to the Roman emperor and that the emperor had no legitimate authority over the people of Israel whatsoever. As a result, Pilate had a group of his followers killed while they were offering sacrifices, and he mixed their blood with the blood of the animals that were offered. The people who relate this incident to Jesus seem to think that the Galileans were punished because they were worse sinners than everyone else. But Jesus, as we just heard, replies as follows. Do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were worse sinners than all other Galileans? No, I tell you. But unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. Jesus then refers to 18 people who were killed by a tower falling on them by accident, the Tower of Siloam, probably a tower near the Pool of Siloam in Jerusalem, which we read about elsewhere in the Gospel. Jesus says again, Do you think that they were worse offenders than all the others living in Jerusalem? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish just as they did. Jesus is telling his hearers, don't be making harsh judgments about those people whom various disasters have befallen. Don't think that they're any worse than you. Focus on your own sins. Repent of your own sins. The suffering, the tribulation that the Galileans and the people crushed by the Tower of Siloam experienced should serve as an example to you, a warning to you to repent of your own sins. May have been that the Galileans and those crushed by the Tower of Siloam were actually less guilty of sin than other people. Maybe that's why God punished them, so that those who were guilty of greater sins would still have time to repent before they die. When Jesus says you will all perish, he is not speaking primarily about punishments in this life, but about eternal punishment, punishment in the life to come. We're all sinners and we all deserve eternal condemnation. Jesus has come to deliver us from this eternal condemnation, but only if we repent. It's important to emphasize here that God does not condemn anyone to hell. We condemn ourselves there by freely choosing to reject God through mortal or grave sin. And by persisting in this sin and not repenting of it, we choose to have something else in our life in place of God. We make our happiness in something other than God. So we ourselves choose hell if we go there. It's not that God is an angry tyrant who wants to smack us down. On the contrary, God desires that each of us be saved, but he respects our free will. By warning his hearers that if they don't repent, they will suffer condemnation, therefore, Jesus is performing an act of love. He's warning them for their own good. The mercy of God and the justice of God are not opposed to each other. They go together. This becomes particularly clear in the parable that Jesus immediately tells about a fig tree that a man planted in his vineyard. For three years, the fig tree did not bear any fruit. The man wanted to destroy the fig tree, but his gardener persuades him to let it grow for one more year to see if it will bear fruit. If it doesn't bear fruit after a year, then cut it down. 
God gives us time here on earth to convert, to turn our lives around, to reject sin, and follow his will. This is his mercy. Now is the time of mercy. But this time here on earth will not last forever. And if we're lazy or complacent, if we presume, if we keep thinking, I'll repent tomorrow, I won't repent of my sins today, we may find that one day it is too late. Once again, Jesus does not beat around the bush, but he's saying all of this out of his infinite love. Last week, I mentioned the message of Our Lady of Fatima in 1917 to three shepherd children in the Portuguese village of Fatima. Her message to the, to the world via the three children was one of repentance. Turn away from sin if there is going to be peace. I bring the message of Fatima up today because this past week, something very important happened in the church. Pope Francis announced that next Friday, on March 25th, the Solemnity of the Annunciation, he is going to consecrate Russia and, the Russia and Ukraine to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. When Our Lady of Fatima appeared in 1917, she told the three children that she wanted the Pope to consecrate Russia to her Immaculate Heart. She said that if this were not done, Russia would spread its errors throughout the world. Now, this was in 1917, the year of the Russian Revolution, when the communists took over that country. So she was warning that communism would spread its errors throughout the world if Russia were not consecrated to her immaculate heart. She said this would lead to wars and persecutions of the church. The good would be martyred. The Holy Father would have much to suffer. Various nations would be annihilated. She did say, however, that eventually the Pope would consecrate Russia to her Immaculate Heart and there would be a period of world peace and her Immaculate Heart would triumph. In 1984, Pope John Paul II consecrated the entire human race to Mary's Immaculate Heart. We know that good came out of that. Five years later, the Soviet Union fell, the Iron Curtain fell. Today, we still don't have world peace. Various errors are still present throughout the world. There are still many persecutions of the church. Pope Francis then is going to consecrate Russia explicitly together with Ukraine to Mary's Immaculate Heart. He was asked to do so by the Ukrainian Catholic bishops. And the Pope has asked the bishops of the world to join him. And our own bishop, Bishop McGratton, has announced that he is going to consecrate Russia and Ukraine in union with the Pope next Friday at 10 a.m which is 5 p.m. Rome time when the Pope will be doing the consecration there. So it's important for us to pray for this important intention that through this consecration of Russia and Ukraine to Mary's Immaculate Heart, there might be an end to the war, peace throughout the world, and that God might bestow the graces that the world and the church so desperately need right now. Peace is not simply the absence of war. It is what St. August, Augustine called the tranquility of order. It exists when we acknowledge Jesus Christ as king of our individual lives, king of families, and king of nations. So we should pray, especially next Friday, and make acts of reparation, and unite our intentions with the Pope. This is really great news, and we pray that great things might come about as a result of this. So today, let us ask for Mary's intercession, that we might all hear the call to repent turn our lives around, follow the gospel, follow God's commands, so that we might attain the eternal happiness of heaven, which is what God has created us for. Let us intercede for the world, that there might be peace throughout the world, peace which is a foretaste of the eternal peace of the life to come.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended from hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Calling upon our loving Father, let us lift up our needs and those of the world. For the Church, may God's love and mercy be abundant upon her. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For people throughout the world, may they be blessed with leaders who work, did, who work diligently for peace and justice. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer from acts of war, especially for the victim, victims in the Ukraine, that they may be delivered from strife. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those whose hearts are burdened by sin and who struggle to trust in God's mercy and forgiveness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faith community, may the Lord's teaching shape our lives and his grace conform us to his heart. We pray to the Lord. For our young people, may they, like Moses, enter more deeply into conversion with the Lord as they seek to discover their vocations. We pray to the Lord. For those who have died, may they find peace and eternal rest in the presence of God. We pray to the Lord. Gracious Father, receive the prayers that we lift up to you today. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings, and grant that we who beseech pardon for our own sins may take care to forgive our neighbor, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. 
lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by your gracious gift each year, your faithful await the sacred Paschal feasts with the joy of minds made pure, so that more eagerly intent on prayer and on the works of charity and participating in the mysteries by which they have been reborn, they may be led to the fullness of grace that you bestow on your sons and daughters. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and William our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. 
Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. God, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The sparrow finds a home, and the swallow a nest for her young. By your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Blessed are they who dwell in your house, forever singing your praise. Let us pray. <clears throat> As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven and are nourished while still on earth with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us in mystery may come to true completion. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. If I could ask the ushers to please come forward for the bulletins.
We have Eucharistic Adoration every Friday in Lent from after the 9 a.m. Mass until 6 p.m. Sign-up sheets are located at the east entrance of the church. Confession is available on Fridays from 10 a.m. until noon. The parish mission continues this Wednesday at 7 p.m. at Assumption Church. You can join us in person, and it will be live streamed. There are soup suppers every Friday in Lent after benediction at 6 p.m. Everyone is welcome to attend. Finally, there will be a memorial mass for loved ones lost during the pandemic held on Wednesday, April 6th in all parishes throughout the diocese. Please see the bulletin for more details. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. Direct, O Lord, we pray, the hearts of your faithful, and in your kindness grant your servants this grace, that abiding in the love of you and their neighbor, they may fulfill the whole of your commands. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke and we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and the other evil spirits, who prowl about the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. Number 673.